Hi, it's Sharon in Teaching Bytes, and Chapter 1 is Google Classroom. And before we begin, you need to make sure that you have an account with your school district. Um, and that's the only way you can access Classroom. Okay, so you can go over Teacher and Student Views, Creating, Sharing, and Grading Assignments, Announcements, and Questions, uh, Organizing Your Students, showing you the workflow and specific settings. So let's get started. So when you log in, you'll see this main page of all the classes that you are a teacher of and even ones that you are enrolled in as a student. So if you wanna add a new class, you just click the plus sign. You can join a class, you can create a class. All right, so join a class as a student or create a class as a teacher. You see I have three classes here. I'm enrolled in this one right here, and I'm a teacher for these two. If you click on these, this button here, you can see that as a teacher, I have all the assignments I've given. I could just click there and find it easily. The classes I teach and the assignments that I have done as a student and my class I'm enrolled in. And here I have my settings. Over here, you can change your profile picture, Google account settings, and this button's really important. Um, Google will send you notifications every time someone's making a comment or if you receive a document. So I just like to turn it off to keep my email lean. Okay, so let's go here back to classes. And I have a class that I um, had from last year. So last year I archived it, but now I brought it back out for this uh, tutorial. Archiving just means that I put it away. I won't, won't see it over here, but I can still access the documents, etc. I can rename it. And over here, this, this folder um, is a direct link to my drive all the documents that I've created and given out, received, and turned in. So let's go ahead and start here with my class, C4 Superstars. And on the top, you'll see your name of your class. And I'm the teacher, so I'm right here. And you can select a theme. So you could choose from a gallery of pictures. There, you can choose from patterns. Okay, you can also upload a photo from many different sources. It's kind of cool. All right, and then over here again goes back to that screen I showed you earlier. Okay, here's the main interface right here. Stream, students, and about. If you have work that you've assigned that's due soon, it will show here. Okay. If you want to view all the assignments you've handed out, you just click here. You can find all the assignments here. Stream. On this is a stream here. It's kind of like Facebook. It's all the different announcements, questions, comments, assignments that you've assigned, student comments, all go this way on the side. You can show which ones you've deleted. So let's say that you, um, you know, want to bring it back. You could go and find it. And this is the class code that students can use to join. You can reset it if it doesn't work. You can disable it so that no more students can add be added to the class. All right, and I'll go over how to do that in a moment. So here's the main stream where students will see all the announcements, assignments, questions you've um, put out there. And you can see I have an announcement here. And in order for you to have to do anything on this page, you have to go to this plus button. So this is where you create four types of things here. Create an announcement. So you can see how I made an announcement over here to my class. Once you create it, you can edit it or you can delete it. 
And this one doesn't require any grading. It's just you're telling the class something, okay? Reminders or anything like that. Here's an assignment that you want to distribute to students. So here's the assignment page. You can um, write the title, a description of it. You can set a due date with a time if you want to. You can upload documents from your computer, from your Google Drive, from YouTube, or a link. And you can assign this to as many classes as you want. So let's say I want to assign this to two classes. I could just click and there it is. So pretty easy. All right. You could get rid of it if you want to. So let's make an assignment. What is the meaning of this video? Okay, and then you can see it's saved automatically, Google style. I can assign it right at this moment or I can save a draft. So you can do a lot of work in the background and then just push it out when you need to. So it saves you lots of time. But actually, I have a do um, assignment that I have given my new class that I want to use for this class. So I can press plus. I can reuse a post. So if you already assigned it to your old class, you can use that again for your new class. So that's really, really cool. So I want to use, select this class. And here is my assignment and this is the one I have a video showing my class I want them to um, write about what it means to them and so I've attached my YouTube video put a due date and then I click assign again or I could save it as a draft and then again remember you could assign it um, as assign it to your selected class preferred class assign and then you'll see it appears right here at the top. I want to, I can edit it, I can delete it if I want to. And then here you can see who has already turned it in, who has not. So if I click here, I could see my class list on my left side. This is where I enter the grades. And you can select how many points you want it to be graded. You can even... Oh, this will confirm, update. You can even type in your own number. Like say you want to put 10 points. And you could do that, update. All right. And then you can see who's done it, who hasn't done it. You can sort by who's finished it, who has not. And then... You can assign a grade. Let's say I could give this person like 10 points. Then you can return it back to them. So it's kind of like when you grade your own papers, right? You, you hand it physically back to the students, but now you're doing it through classroom. And they get an email. So what do you do when you have graded all your students' work? Um, there's no grade book in classroom, but if you click this gear here, you have two options. So if you want to download the grades for just this assignment, you can click on that and it will download all of it to a CSV file. But if you want all the grades for all assignments, you can click that and it also gives you a CSV file. Okay, so that's a student work view and this goes back here to instructions. Okay. All right, so let's cancel this so I don't return this back to the student. Okay, I don't want to do that. All right, so that's my assignment right there. And let's say I want this announcement to stay at the top because I want my students to see that. So I can click here and move to the top. So if you have anything that's important that you want featured, um, you can move it to the top, which is great. Okay, so now... When you give them assignment, 
Google Classroom will make a copy for each student. So I do want to show you an old assignment that I've given my students. So I'm going to go here to my book report. You could see I had five finished and 18 didn't finish. I can mark it as reviewed so I don't have to look at it anymore. But I'll click here on this view. And this is what that looks like. Um, you could see their attachments. You could sort by all, right, all the students. Or you can sort, like I said, by which ones that have not done it, which ones that have done it. So really easy view for you. Okay, so notice here, I go to my student's document. Let's say I'm grading it. If you look at the top, the title of my document was BK report doc, doc. That was my book report Google Doc. And I gave a copy to every student. So it has a hyphen afterward and their name in capital letters. So it's really easy um, way to organize it. And you will see if I go into my my drive. Okay, so if I go back here to, which I haven't shown you this yet, this is about his Google Drive folder. Easily go into that book report form and see how all of these have book report dot doc and the student's name. Okay, so it's important to make a copy for every, every student. It's like you're Xeroxing it. All right. Okay. So going back to my stream, let's say I want to make it, I want to see what students can see. So here I go and toggle here to my student. And this is what her class looks like. She can join a class, enter the class code. She just types it in, or he. And this is their classes they're enrolled in here in the settings, so similar view. So if I click here, this is her drive, and this goes right into the documents that I've created for her, and it goes right there. So easy place to have it. Then if I click here, this is student view. So this shows what assignments are due tomorrow. Nothing here. And this is a stream. Okay, so it looks very similar to the teacher view. But instead of, you know, for me showing me who has done it, who has not, this shows her status. Okay, th this view, you can see her classmates. She could email the classmates by clicking the envelope. You could sort here. And then the about page, which I'll show you that I have on my page, it just looks like hers, except it doesn't have invite teacher, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so similar to the, t the student teacher view. All right, so if I go back here to my class, if I want to ask my class a question, I could just create, create question. And this is different than assignment because um, students don't need to grade, don't need to turn in anything. Maybe you want to have a discussion with them about a picture, you know, see what, how, what they respond, the responses. So my question is maybe what doesn't belong? I could put that, again, the same due dates, ways I can attach documents, same ways I can assign to classes, just like announcements. But instead, I'm just going to, instead of assigning, I'm going to ask. And again, I can save a draft or I can post it at the moment. And if I ask, so let's just pretend I'm going to do this one. I ask, I can select two options, see and reply to each other's answers. So allowing students to do that or edit their answers. But I'm going to keep it just like this. If I ask, then I come here. Then this is where students can... um respond okay edit delete if I want to move it to the top when it goes to the bottom there that is 
Okay. And this time, I want to show you students. This is a student list, all the kids in your class. I can select all. Let's say I want to invite them all before my class begins. I can invite them with an email. I can remove all my students, or I could select a few students that maybe moved away. I could email all of them at once. And if some students are not um, appropriately engaging, you can mute them. When they comment, it won't show up. And I would keep this as default so that you have your stream pretty clean. But if you do want student engagement, you can have click it where they can only comment on certain things or they can post and comment. So just being mindful of when to use these options. A class code again. Um, I can disable it, like I said, if I don't want any more students to join. So that's my student view. And then in the about page, this is, you know, like a home page. You can have your students email you by clicking here. And um, you can invite teachers to join your class. So if you have um, a co-teacher you teach with, um, other specialist teachers, like special education teachers, uh, you can invite them. And they have the same permissions as you do. I created my class here, the Google Drive folder, where I store all my documents, you can see. And it's easier for me to just go and find all the assignments. You can add links, videos, resources. I put my blog over here so students can refer to it. I can have all these options here, edit, delete. Okay. All right. So some tips for you. I have this, you can see I have this um, add to classroom button. I downloaded that on my extensions part. And this is really cool because let's say you are on CNN and you want to share an article with your students. You don't need to, you know, copy the link, bring it into to classroom. You can just click on this page. Then you have the plus button. And if I click here, I could select which class I want to share it with. So I want to share with my current class. And what do I want to do? I want to create an assignment, make an announcement, maybe an announcement, and then go. And then I can say, C4, I found this cool article for you to read. Happy Labor Day. I can save a draft or I can post it. So let's just go ahead and post that. Then I can view it, see what it looks like. It's my new class and it's right there. So really easy for you to seamlessly assign things, ask questions to your students. Another tip, there's also a mobile app on your devices that are for teachers and students. So as teachers, you can create assignments, etc., right on your mobile device. And students can also do their work or see assignments on their mobile device. All right, I hope Classroom has helped you. Please watch our next videos for specific tutorials on those apps that will really help you integrate into your Google Classroom.